Hi, I'm Debbie, the Obsessed Painter, and I wanted to welcome you to my studio. Thanks for dropping by. Just wanted to show you the little project we're going to be working on. It's this cute little white vanity that I picked up at a yard sale. So if you like this video of how to, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button, and let's just jump right in. This is the vanity that we're going to be working on. I picked this up at a yard sale. It had such cute little lines on it and a big, beautiful mirror little decor. I love the little round feet on it, on the legs, the little uh, wheels, the wooden wheels were wonderful. But it did have this piece of trim on here and then when I got it the trim was broken in half and so I glued it back together. But unfortunately the other side of the vanity itself um, opposite this did not even have the trim. So if you can see right here this is where the trim is missing. And so what I needed to do was uh, get a product that I could cast a mold of that trim in order to make a duplicate so I could put it on that side. I went ahead and went with this molding putty. I've seen a lot of uh, different artists use it to make um, castings for their trim and it looked like it would be pretty easy to do. Um, I was quite surprised on how easy it was. The actual kit comes with the uh, the two uh, compounds and what you do is you mix the gray one so you see the gray putty and the yellow putty and you mix them together until you get a consistent yellow color and then once you get that yellow color you go ahead and press your trim into it um, I was really quite surprised on how detailed this molding came out or this casting came out because it it had every little detail that I needed in there. So I went ahead and put that in there. It took about a half an hour for that one to cast before I could pop out my mold and use it. Also I needed um, an additional part that broke off. So I went ahead and casted that one. That one took a little bit longer because it was thicker. What do you do when you're using this is you just go ahead and dust it with some cornstarch once you've got your mold. And then you, I use this air clay. And the air clay worked out really well. You push it into the mold pushed it down really good and hard to make sure I got all the creases and bubbles out and then you wipe off the additional uh, air clay on there so you've got a nice flat surface. I even turned mine over and pressed it down so that I would have a flat surface because that right there is what that side of the mold when it pops out is what goes up against your furniture and you want that to lay very flat when you attach it to your piece. Um, but I was really surprised how easy it was to use and um, how well it turned out. I think you'll be really impressed with it. So I'm going to go ahead here and start the process of stripping it. I used the citrus sill and I did go ahead and cover the piece in plastic. So after I got all those five layers of white paint off of there, this is what I was left with. Um, wood's not in the best condition. I did need to do some repairs on the drawers, um, but it wasn't too bad. It, it worked out. I went ahead and primed it with the uh, Dixie Bell Gray uh, bonding, I think it's Bond Boss or Bonding Boss. And as you can see, the drawers were pink and green, so I couldn't save those um, as far as getting down to the real wood. So I had to also use the uh, primer on that. And since I intended on doing the piece in gray anyway, the gray bonding the gray bonding boss worked out really well. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and start some blending. This is the first time I've ever done any blending on furniture. Um, I used the Hurricane Gray from Dixie Belle, the Manatee Gray, and then the Fluff for my lighter color. The uh, Hurricane Gray was the darkest color that I used. On the floor there you'll see my coffee bean and I did start out using a little bit of coffee bean but changed my mind and took it completely out. Right now you can see me I'm using the Hurricane Gray putting that on and then I'm going to go ahead and put the Manatee Gray and this is right over top of um, my Oh, what am I trying to say? My bonding boss, uh, gray bonding boss primer. So I've gone ahead and sprayed that a little bit and I'm going to start blending these together. And I did this on the drawers for practice. <laughs> then I'm going to put a little bit of the fluff here in the center. 
and I've taken my manatee gray paintbrush and kind of blended a little bit into the hurricane. You're going to need three paintbrushes for this, one for each color. And I'm just kind of touching up here, making sure I'm getting a good enough blend. And then you get a dry brush um, and brush it together. Right here I'm just kind of wiping because I don't want that to bleed out onto my front because I do plan on decoupaging the front of these drawers. So this is I'm taking my dry brush and just blending and I blend up and down back and forth every so often you're going to want to wipe off your brush so that it's nice and neat and clean and you can see the colors blending together really well. I think that I probably should have blended my white a little bit more or my fluff in there a little bit more but that's okay. Um, I Again, this is my first project so I'm thinking it's turning out pretty well. And as you see here, I've just kind of sped everything up, but you'll see the process of me. This is the piece that goes in in front of the mirror. And uh, I needed to go ahead and get that blended as well. And on the front of here, I plan on putting some uh, gold gilding around the edge of this piece and right there in the center. I was thinking of doing decoupage, but I didn't want to get too crazy with the decoupage. So I think I'll just cover that in with some gold gilding as well. You'll see right there where my hand is, there's a little bit of um, outline. And I think that's the piece that I'm going to go ahead and do some gilding on. But I really did enjoy this blending. Um, these three colors are so similar, so close. And if you've never done a blending before, I suggest you do very similar colors. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I did paint this dresser twice after I did this blending. I thought that it was too dark. So I came back and I lightened it up one shade, but I still enjoyed this blending as well. I just thought it was a little bit too dark for where I was going to be using it. Yeah, and this, and then I, you got to make sure you get the edges really well. And in using that manatee gray, I just kind of blended in those edges so that it would all be cohesive when I got it put together. And here I've got the whole back of the mirror piece. I've taken off the mirror, but I've still got to do the sides. And that's where that piece that I just painted, it goes on the bottom here. As you can see the screw lines and everything. It actually helps to hold the mirror in. And on this one, again, I'm outlining with the Hurricane Gray, making sure I'm getting my edges really well. And then I'll come back with the Manatee Gray, and I'll go ahead and fill that in blend it a little bit and put in a little bit of fluff and then I'm going to take that and spritz it and then use my again my dry brush wiping it off every so often to make sure I get a really good blend in there and um, again I think I probably could have blended that fluff in there a little bit better but for being my first attempt at blending I think it turned out pretty good and now I'll just go ahead and do the rest of the mirror. Just doing it in sections because it makes it a little easier for me. And because the colors are so close together, you can um, continue you know, to blend the two sections together as long as you keep your paint uh, wet with your spritzer. Um, when you get this decoupage uh, tissue papers, they're calling it, comes with three, actually three sheets. And the size that I got was the 19 and a half by 30. And I used, let me see, two of the sheets um, and had plenty of leftover for all the drawers and the two sides. When you're doing the decoupage, you're going to want to have the decoupage gel or medium and I got that from uh, Dixie Bell as well and, and it was wonderful. Um, also you saw there that I had a piece of cellophane and what I found is that you use the cellophane to rub down the um, decoupage paper. So you're going to want to put a lot of uh, decoupage, a nice really thorough coat 
on the dresser drawer or the surface that you're getting ready to decoupage on. And then you're gonna to wanna to use this cellophane to rub it softly. Um, and it helps to get rid of all the air bubbles or any creases. It's very forgiving. You can pull it back up and re reposition the, the decoupage paper. And um, as you see here, I put just a little bit more um, decoupage gel on there to make sure I got a good thorough covering and make sure the edges were down good and good and uh, flat. Um, try not to use your hand, your bare hands on it because if you have any oils, dirt, or paint on you still, it really could affect you know your your paper. Um, then when you're done getting it situated where you want it, you want to put a nice thick coat or a nice complete coat on top of the decoupage paper using that decoupage gel and that too helps to get rid of any of the creases or any of the uh, wrinkles that you may have. Um, this particular drawer did have those four little crease lines that you see on there and all I did was when I had the cellophane on there I just softly with my fingernail kind of pressed down in the center of those lines to give them more definition and this paper being so thick and almost like a fabric it's so wonderful it's so woven together um, it doesn't rip or tear now it could if you got too aggressive with it so you know you want to be careful but um, it took to it beautifully and the minute I put the second coat over top of it it just it just goes right into those little creases and it looks really really nice and you can see here where I am still trimming um, yeah, I'm laying down the scraps that I have left over to fill in these little drawer fronts and again just using my pencil and getting as close as I can marking it and clipping it again so that it fits nice um, I did use my razor knife and my scissors a little bit I found that the scissors work a lot better on this material um, of paper than the uh, razor knife because the razor knife seems to unless you've got an extremely sharp sharp blade I guess maybe my blade was a little dull but it it fits in there nicely and again just putting another coat on it really makes the difference now I'm going to go ahead and do the side here what I did when I did this side is I put just a little bit up on the top and got my decoupage paper settled in where I wanted it and then I kind of lifted it and put more layers of the gel I didn't want to do the whole thing at once because it was a larger sheet and I wanted to make sure I didn't have any problems with tearing or too many bubbles or anything Once I got my um, decoupage paper on, I decided I wanted to do a little bit more on there. And so I went and got my Harlequin uh, stencil and just kind of did a little bit of stenciling on there. And it was just the perfect touch. What I did after um, I did my stenciling, I decided to take a little bit of the coffee bean and really dilute it down with some water and use it for some shadowing around the edges of my decoupage paper. I did the whole vanity like this, even the drawer fronts. And if you remember, because it already has the decoupage sealer on there, if I didn't like it, I could easily wipe it off with a wet cloth. But I really did like it. It gave it um, some nice, nice dimension and just aged it a titch. And I really liked the way it turned out. After I did my um, shadowing like I wanted on the sides and the drawers, I decided it was time for some housekeeping. So what I did is I got this lemon verbena furniture salve from Dixie Bell. It smells amazing. And I rubbed it on the inside of all of my drawers. Gives it a beautiful shine and a beautiful smell, conditions it, the paint and everything nicely. Also, I took the Easy Peasy Spray Wax and I did the whole vanity in the easy peasy spray wax and I loved that product as well because you need the wax to seal your chalk paint um, but boy I tell you that easy peasy is just what they say it is it is, goes on so smoothly and uh, is so easy you just spray and wipe once I got my waxing done I decided it was time to pay attention to the details so I took my gold gilding wax and started to um, 
address some of the details and you can see around the circles there I kind of put a little bit of gilding wax on there you can use a soft brush or your fingertip um, I use a little bit of both and just started touching up the dresser highlighting areas that I really wanted to pop out and I tell you this gold gilding wax is addictive you could do that. you could go all day and get all of your details and anything that rises up you know any rises or texture and just put the gilding wax on it it was it's beautiful it just adds such a nice accent to the piece you can see right there in the center I did the uh, the little uh, I don't know what do you call that a fleur-de-lis type uh, embellishment I also did around the drawers both the inside and the outside edges um, did around the edge of the dresser and on the feet when I got done with the feet I went ahead and finished off the um, edging of the mirror as well with the gilding wax okay now as you can see it's time for the fun part I've gone ahead and inserted the mirror into the dresser and assembled the whole dresser as well as I changed out the hardware and put in these beautiful crystal knobs they add such a little accent to this vanity it's so dainty looking now and the vintage mirror it's I just left it the way it was I was thinking I would refinish it but once I saw it it was it's just beautiful I loved everything about this well here's that sweet little vanity all dressed up and looking amazing this project was so much fun and I appreciate you dropping by hope to see you on the next one